morning. Uh, so this is going to be the next challenge we take on for the bathroom. So the uh, previous uh, people that own the property, they had this plaster boarded up and I think there's some tiles down here. Um, so obviously we've taken those off and it's created a, a good mess really. So we like the idea of maintaining the chimney breast um, versus putting some plasterboard or something else on it. So essentially we're going to try and get it back to a state where it looks decent still. So how are we going to do that? Um, it's going to be quite a long winded task in the end, but I think when it's done it will be looking pretty decent hopefully. And we have a few stages, so we need some clean up. So we need to carry on getting the rest of this, this bad uh, material off. It's just, it was just crumbling away. So we're going to make it a little bit more smoother. Um, then after that, we're going to um, essentially plaster it up. Um, so we're going to use some um, uh, gypsum hardwall for this. Get that to a smooth status, and then we'll be able to essentially tile, but it's not tiles. It's uh, these little bad boys, which are brick slips. So the end result will be, the brick slips will be on top of the brick. A little silly, because there's bricks underneath, but there is also a bit of logic in that. Uh, the reason is, because we like the look, so we want to get the look. But because this part of the chimney is going to be forming part of the shower, so it's not going to be direct water course on there, but you know it's still going to get wet. It's in a shower. So what I want to do is once I've got it smoothed down and I've created a nice smooth layer, I'm actually going to be sealing the whole chimney stack. Uh, there's a product called Hydroban. I'm sure there's many of us out there. The idea of that is I have a totally waterproof membrane underneath on top of smooth surface un underneath these then these will be on top so it doesn't matter then if I use a really great tile adhesive or really great grout which is in quotes waterproof it doesn't really matter because ultimately the surface below is 100% waterproof uh, the Hydra brand stuff it's painted on and it goes off a certain colour but it's, it's fully waterproof the only other thing we could have done I think a lot more costly I think pros and cons probably wouldn't have gone down this route necessarily is to board it out but with a waterproof backing board so the boards I'm going to be using for the shower space are weddy boards so I might have some spare but I think it's not really a cost effective route to do it and I want to practice some more plastering so we'll we'll go through these motions instead. So in the next video I'll cover off just cleaning this up and prepping this and then essentially have to work through which is going to take me probably the best part of a week evenings here and there working through these next steps and hopefully all being well we have a half decent chimney breast looking something like that uh, by the weekend and I'll uh, post the videos as I go through. Thanks, see ya. Do the clean up and prep for this before I uh, get to the plastering point. So this will be split into two. First the clean up, not gonna go crazy, it doesn't need to be perfect. Just need to make it half decent, a little bit more smooth than it is right now. Get rid of the big chunks, there's some skirting board to crack off there. Generally get it into an okay state, get rid of this cable, so I can then lay something on top. So not gonna go too crazy, just more of a best endeavors, given that the uh, the gypsum hard wall will probably forgive a lot of sins for getting it to a decent state. So tools for this job then. Um, Oscillating saw with, let me show that. It's a scraping attachment, absolute brilliant. I'll try and do a short clip of that as well. It's a really, really, really good tool. So that's gonna probably do most of the work. If I need to, a little hand one as well. Scraper, probably had that for a couple of decades. That's a really good scraper. We've also got a, a saw attachment for the oscillating blade as well, just to get some of the bits at the top where the plasterboard's still stuck and perhaps even for getting the skirting off. Uh, crowbar, I think I've just spotted a couple of nails and maybe the skirting if I need to. Probably not going to need that. Another spare battery, because it might take a little while. Um, just got a light, I um, might need it, maybe. It's getting dark now. And then, uh, just to make sure I'm well lubricated, a, uh, a beer, uh, but a brew dog jackhammer. Really liking that at the moment, um, until my other beers get here anyway. So I'm gonna crack on now. I'll, uh, I'll show you afterwards what state we've got it to, and that'll be before we get to the, the prep stage. So let's get started. You see how effective it is, right? Uh, I just thought it'd be useful to see the uh, the before, and then as I get through, I'll show the uh, show the after. 
you see it's not so bad but it's just not flat enough to put something on top so I want to be getting it down to a decent flatness I can then put the plaster over the top of it so this isn't quite nice enough now the plan is to smooth this out using the trusty old oscillating saw and then hopefully we can then get to our plastering stage after that right absolute beast of a tool my little five pound attachment has just turned this job from and now probably over an hour manually to probably 15 minutes and that's all three sides but hopefully now you can see uh, generally a lot smoother than it was it's not perfect actually the bricks are a bit all over to be honest but that's a much flatter surface got rid of all the debris on the edges as well so that should be decent enough to plaster onto so i've gone all the way through as well all the way around generally in much better state uh, let's go get rid of that cable get rid of that in a second um, and then I'll move on to the plastering stage and I'll, I'll show you the, uh, the prep work for that I'll be doing next. Now I've done the clean up I can carry on preparing uh, the, the chimney stack ready for plastering. So I'm not going to be plastering just to get the prepared step. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to mix up some bonding. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, I'm then going to stick on the beads. I'll talk about that in a second as well. And then with leftover bonding just patch up some of the holes because when I was cleaning there was just bits of mortar falling out the wall so I don't want to give myself a harder job than I need to tomorrow filling in big chunks of holes so I'm going to mix a bit of extra bonding today tonight and then fill in those at least then I've got a decent surface to work towards so what have I got for the job today so this is one of the main things I'm going to be getting these beads onto here and essentially that's to give me a nice stretch edge to work to I'm pretty sure the chimney stack is true but I'll check it beforehand and then once I've got my beads on, I know I've got two good straight lines to work from, and then I can essentially plaster up to that, and now I'm gonna have a fairly flat and straight surface ready for the, the brick slipping or tiling. Uh, I've got a bag of bonding, some leftover bonding. I think this for what I need it for, this will be enough. This is gonna be twofold, so part of it is gonna be to fill in some of the chunky holes, the gaps where the mortar is, and then the other one is to use it as a glue, um, a tip or trick or tip, uh, I learned from uh, Blaine from Plasterers for Beginners. I'll put a link in the, in below. And essentially, instead of having to attach it to the wall using screws or if it was plasterboard, you'd probably be looking at maybe stapling it on. Um, essentially, this gives you a bit of a, an easier route and you just treat the, the bonding like glue. So it needs to be a decent thickness. You could mix it by hand, but I'm doing a few chunks, so I'll be doing it with a paddle instead. Uh, and then sticking the two beads on. By the time they were set, probably some point tonight, but I'll be picking it up again tomorrow. That'll be solid, they won't be going anywhere. So I've got my bonding as well. For the mixing of the bonding, um, it just helps me. I don't, I'm not really that great with the measurements. So as soon as you know what your ratios are, I always tend to have a tub, you know, left out of takeaway tub is easiest. And it could be anything. And then I know if I'm going to be putting X amount of water in, I can then put the corresponding X amount of plaster in, in this case, bonding. So useful, simple thing, but really useful. Um, I've got quite overkill to be honest, the hacksaw, that's to cut my beads once I've um, measured them. I mean, in an ideal world, you have some tin snips, which is going to be more than adequate enough. This is a bit of an overkill, but um, it's all I can find without going even more overkill and using the uh, using the angle grinder. So, uh, on top of that then, what I've got is my drill, just a power drill, and then a paddle to mix. Like I said, if I was only doing a small bit of it, I probably would have just used the bucket trial and mixed it by hand, but because I'm probably going to have about half a bucket's worth of bonding, um, might as well get a good consistency and mix it properly. Uh, in addition, I would also have a, a water brush, and that's just to get the wall a bit wet in places, um, just where I'm going to be adding to. And when I come to the job tomorrow, you'll see me wet much more of the wall. And that's just so I've got a half decent surface where it's not going to suck up all the moisture and plaster straight away. I've also then got my bucket trowel, of course you need that to get it out, and I'll use that to throw some on the wall. Um, I've got my sort of pointing trowel, more so if I need to get in some small gaps, I might not need it. This isn't supposed to be a super clean, tidy job, it's just to get it on there, fill in the gaps and stick on the beads. Uh, and then a plastering trowel. Um, this is an old Marshall Town one, but for this job, uh, more than fine. I won't be using this for uh, some of the finishing jobs because it's, it's a bit tight. It could do a bit of a clean up. Um, of course, a bucket, I've got a bucket, I'm just going to have the bonding in. I've got a bucket of cold, clean water here. Um, I have got a hawk to put the plaster on, I probably won't need this, I've got it just in case to save me faffing. And then in addition to that, um, I think that's about it really. So next I'm going to measure up the wall, get the right measurements for the wall, cut the beads into place, 
mix up my mixture, get some water on the wall in the place I'm going to stick it to, and then I'll show you once I've finished and tell you about the little pieces if I had any problems or anything like that. But yeah, ideally, it's probably not going to take too long, probably less than half an hour, I would say. So I'm going to crack on. Yeah, okay, then that's about me uh, wrapping up now, uh, just to get out some of the loose bits on the corner. Make sure that's showing prude, and then I've got a really nice line to work up against. Um, you can see I've put a bit more on than planned. There are quite a few holes I've wanted to fill in. Um, this one down here, you can see it very well. That was a bit too deep, so I'm going to go a few mil play with this bonding. So I thought I'll get it to a decent level. So when I put on the um, a plaster tomorrow, I'll build out the rest and make it flat then. But for the most part, beads are on. Now they're they're pretty much hard already. I've only been doing this for about 15 minutes or so. Less than that probably, um, and the gaps are filled in, so I'm quite happy tomorrow I'll be able to uh, crack on and get all this covered off with the uh, the next layer of plaster, ready then for its uh, waterproof membrane, which I'll do on the next day. So yeah, I'm good to go now. So I'm tidy up. The only other thing actually worth mentioning, I always used to uh, get these buckets from B&Q or wherever else really, pound, 99p probably. Uh, I always was in the habit of uh, trying to clean them, so looking at this now I'd probably spend... I don't know, five, ten minutes trying to clear the bucket, somewhere like that, depending on what stage you know, I am in the plaster and how long I've left it. Um, and then I kind of realised it's not an MP. So instead now, whenever I'm swinging my B&Q, I'll buy 10, 15 of them. At least then when I'm finishing a job like this, all I've got to do is clean the tools, which by the way, are really handy if you've got your bucket of water still. They can sit in there while you're doing some other bits and pieces, which makes it a whole lot easier. So the bucket, generally I'm chucking that. And then a big bucket of water for my tools, and it makes it a bunch easier when you clean them afterwards. Right, I'll see you tomorrow when I come to plaster the wall. Evening. So uh, tonight's plan is to cover this wall in a layer of gypsum's uh, hard wall. So last night we got our our beading on, did that with a bit of bonding, also filled in a few of the bigger holes of the bonding as well. And tonight's plan is to cover that whole area, all three sides of the chimney stack, in Gypsum's hard wall. Uh, I was toying over which was the right material to use and uh, finding one of uh, Blaine's videos on YouTube, uh, Plasterers for Beginners, Plastering for Beginners. Uh, and there was a sort of bit of a tutorial on hard wall, so I sort of decided to go down that route. So, what I've got then, tools for, to, for the job tonight, I've got a uh, a full bag of uh, hard wall. I'm probably going to use that full bag, to be honest. Normally, you know, sometimes I'll be sort of being a bit tight and might use half a bag here, half a bag there. But I've looked at the square footage and there's no point me keeping any because keeping hold of half a bag of plaster probably do more damage than it's worth when it goes off. So there's no point doing that. So I've got a full bag. I've also got a full bucket. So I've got a 25 litre bucket. Um, uh, ox bucket, it could be any bucket. More so, I'm going to use a full bag. It's going to fill up quite high. Also, when I'm mixing there, I'm not going to make an absolute state, so it's good for that as well. Uh, on top of that, I've got uh, hawks. I'm probably going to need that more so than I did last night. I've got my trowel, a bit of a bigger trowel tonight. The one was just an old one, so this one, a bit bigger. Uh, obviously, a bucket trowel, you're going to need that. I've got a, a spotlight, because it's getting dark. It's probably going to get dark in a bit. I might even try and find my head torch just when I'm going around the corners and stuff. Uh, I've got my little tub, like I did the other day, in case I want to get some more measurements out, but for now at least I've got my water pre-measured in this bucket. Quite a useful bucket actually, because it's got the measurements inside the bucket, so you know where you stand, rather than trying to measure out the water's a bit of a bath. Um, my brush, uh, initially I'm going to use this just to wet down the wall, just to get a little bit of moisture on the wall, so I've got a little bit more time to play with the hard wall before it sucks straight in. Um, of course, I've got a bit of music, I mean... Probably definitely going to need a bit of music tonight, to be honest. Uh, I've also got my drill and paddle to give it a good mix. So all I'll be doing in this is adding probably a quarter or less of a bag each time, giving it a mix until it's nice and consistently smooth. And then I'll, I'll do it again until it's all gone. Uh, and then lastly, a bit of a secret weapon tool here. So if any of you are DIY plasterers, as am I, uh, this is called a speed skim, um, absolute fantastic tool, ideal for getting plaster flat, which is the, probably the most important thing to do rather than trying to get it smooth and trying to get it flat. Having a speed skim allows you to throw the plaster on the wall in a sort of meaningful way, but then 
having a, a nice rundown of a smooth line. This is a short one, 450, because when I needed this, my use cases were you know not really big. This one's not really big either, but you can get it up to 1.2 meters. So I think if I was going to start over and have more passion to do in the house, if I have more left over, I'd probably go ahead and buy maybe the 900 mil to begin with, you know, double the size of this. That'd probably cover most of my use cases, I would say, for the most part. But for now at least, this is almost a perfect size for each side of this. So I should be able to run cleanly up against the line. And then the last the tool for the job uh, is a uh, beer. Yep, yep, you got it. And tonight is a tiny Rebel Cali Pale Ale. Uh, my friend's been buying this by the mini cask and a little beer machine. I'm a bit jealous. Um, so I'm going to enjoy a can of that as I'm plastering the wall. First thing I'll be doing tonight is getting my trowel. Cleaning the lines, make sure I've got nice clean lines and also no loose bits on the wall because that will really get you annoyed if you're trying to smooth out the wall, get it flat and you've got small bits of uh, well, plaster in this case bonding. And then after that, I'm going to wet the wall down a little bit just as a bit of moisture on there. Mix up my mixture, probably put a bit more water on the wall, not too much. And then I'll start applying liberally at first just to get a good layer on there. Then I'll use my speed skim, get it down as flat as I can. It's important, it doesn't need to be perfect, that's the key thing with this, I need to get it to a flat enough level that I can then apply my Hydrobam. Hydrobam, I think I've got a few mil of forgiveness as well, so even if there's small gaps and things or it's not perfect, the Hydrobam will cover it. And of course then I've got my tie adhesive going on top and brick slips on top of that. So this isn't supposed to be a perfect job. I'll do my best I can to get it on nice and smooth, or flat at least, um, but beyond that it doesn't need to be perfect. So I'm not sure how long this will take, to be honest probably take much longer in the prep than it will do in actually the applying but I'm going to crack on now and I'll, uh, I'll show you when I'm done. Uh, so I'm just wrapping up now, I probably took about an hour and a half altogether, ended up putting uh, two layers on uh, on each side, it took a bit longer, uh, probably lesson learned I think to begin with was probably didn't have enough moisture on the wall to begin with, so when I'm applying that first layer, it was drying so quick and I was getting a bit of a sweat on just trying to get it flat again. So I think in hindsight, if I was to do that again, what I'd probably do is uh, add a bit more moisture on the wall, just give me a little bit more time. Um, the other mistake I did make actually was I tried putting a layer on two sides and I came back to the first side to put it on and it was just the combination of the two, it was just too tough to bring uh, back straight away, so the other layer to tie it up in the end. Um, also, unfortunately, my wicked speed skim, um, with it only being 45 or yeah, 450 across, it was just a bit short for these edges. So instead, um, I think you know, a 900 would be fine. I think when you're using this material, you're going to be using a, I'm going to call it a straight edge, long piece of metal, basically. Um, but this was the best next thing I had, it's just a tiny bit too short. So instead of having nice single swoops up and cleaning it off um, and straightening it, it wasn't quite there. I had to go back and forth and iron across as well. So I got there in the end. I'd say it's not perfectly flat. Uh, I can see a few little dips and stuff, nothing major. If I was plastering, um, sort of multi-finish on top, I'd probably use, um, I probably would have spent a bit more time trying to flatten it on this round and then I'd be cleaning that up quite well with the, um, the finishing, multi-finish layer. But for now, for the purpose I've got, I needed it flat enough and smooth enough so I can apply the hydroband and if for, it, for it to be effective, I'd say it's fine for that. So tomorrow I'll apply that, and then the day after that, depends how the week goes, I'll plan on starting to um, tie it up. So for now, yeah, pretty much fine, done for now, um, and I'll move on to the next, see you later. Right, it's the next day now, uh, the hard wall's dry really well, Smoother than I thought it was, or at least flatter than I thought it was last night, so I'm happy with that. Again, not too bothered because I'm going to be tiling it anyway. Uh, I've got a slight damp area still because I have to build it out a little bit. However, uh, the product I'm going to apply now is, uh, you can apply on a damp wall. I'm hoping that's fine, really, to throw it straight on. So what I'm going to be doing now, nice and quick and simple, is Hydroban. This is going to be my waterproof membrane. The idea being that this side is going to be basically within the shower. So I kind of figured it's worthwhile covering the whole side because if water gets in anywhere, it will make its way around. So I'll seal the whole chimney stack. So the hard walls on, I'm gonna put the hydroban on, literally rollers on, so I've got the hydroban. I've got uh, an old roller, because I'm not sure what the hydroban will do, so I can probably chuck it if needs be. Paintbrush just to get around some of the edges. 
uh, and then a tray. That's pretty much it. I'm expecting this to be a really short job. There are a couple of tiny little holes, certainly around this side there's a couple of little dinks and stuff. But this will cover up gaps to 3 mil, so I think it'd be more than appropriate. So the plan is put one on, it changes colour when it's dried, so I'll be able to put one on now. It's, it's early evening now, give it a few hours and I'll come back up and probably put the other layer on tonight. That gives me the surface ready for tiling tomorrow. Right, I'll crack on. Uh, I thought I'd just show you the mixture. Uh, it's a lot more watery than I thought it would be. A little bit like glue, um, but almost like PVA. So I think it's going to be able to be rolled on dead easy, so quick easy job. Okay, so that's the uh, first layer on, probably 15 minutes or so, just like painting. Actually matches the old green ceiling. So I know it's supposed to go off, it should turn darker. Once it turns darker, I'm going to guess, looking at the rate it's going off less than an hour. I can give it another coat. It does specify not to go over one millimetre. So it's a fairly light coat to begin with. I'll put another one on, I filled in a couple of little dips as well. If I need to fill up and put one more on, I might do afterwards, but for now at least, I'm going to leave it an hour, put another layer on, and that might be it. And um, then, yeah, ready for uh, ready for tiling. Hello, mate, just want to get your advice on something. And um, this whole area here, I'm going to need to raise up just so I've got enough runoff for the show, which is going to be over here, make it to over there. Um, so it's going to be raising up probably about four inches or so. Now, at the moment, I'm either going to start the, that wall, it's going to finish there, or it's going to finish on the other side. Now, if it finishes the other side, fine, I'll build all of the floor basically on the wood floor. But I think it'd actually look better if it comes on this piece. It just seems like it'll make a bit more sense because the toilet's going to go there. Anyway, if I do that, ultimately it's going to finish on this brickwork here, which is some old breeze, breeze block. So the question is, um, what would you recommend to build that up? So it's got a nice solid surface for the wood frame to lay on. My options, I guess, are I either you know, make up some mortar of sorts, cement and sand or whatever else, and get a, you know, a layered, smooth layer on top. That's an option, I guess. Or the other one is I literally build, you know, a little tiny, a little tiny brick layer on there, maybe that way around. And then use like mortar to hold that in place and build a straight line across there. That becomes a solid line of bricks on bricks. And then build my frame off the top of that. So make sure that this height is correct, obviously. And then build on top of that. Um, I'm jostling between the two ideas. Uh, what do you think would, what would you do in this scenario? And it, ultimately, once it's on there, that's going to have to be solid. Because the wooden frame is going to sit on it and it can't move because it'll have tiles on it. So I want it to be solid long term. So I'd try to make it up with some mortary jobby. Or should I basically build a little tiny wall of, you know, just a single layer of bricks is fine. But then build a mortar underneath so it sort of stays all all straight and solid. What would you reckon I should go for? Right, the second layer of hydroban on. Going to leave that now overnight. I'll be ready for tiling tomorrow. And then I'll, I'll get a crack in. Nice and short one for tonight. Have an early night. See you tomorrow. In today's video, um, what I'm going to be doing is tiling this chimney stack. Uh, ultimately, I'm using brick slips, but essentially it's a tiling, tiling job, tiling process. So it's a bit delayed because I've been waiting for a couple of spare parts, tools to arrive. They've arrived now. Uh, since the last uh, short clip, um, we've got two layers of the hydroban on. So that's uh, like a, a good seal across the whole chimney stack. There is something different I'm going to be doing on this side where I'm going to be meeting the brick slips with the tiles but for now at least I'll just brick slip halfway and I'll show you that once I've done it. So um, tools for the job, looks like quite a lot going on but it's quite simple really I think. So we've got a new tool, say new tool, second hand, I think got it from about half price but it's in pretty much new condition, a wet tile saw. I would say um, you know you can use a dry tile saw but I think those guys are ninjas. Um, I just have really good success with a wet tile saw in the past, even like small cuts as well. I've got other drill bits and bits and pieces and attachments for the oscillating saw and the uh, the angle grinder as well. But wet tile saw has just been the most successful for doing my tiling job. So got one of those. I'll get that out soon. And um, I've got my uh, adhesive. So I've got some Rapid Flex uh, adhesive. Uh, this is from Top Styles. Can get it from wherever I suppose. Uh, of course, I've got my brick slips. And um, so not exactly like this. I think this is a sample. But I've got uh, eight boxes here, which I'm sort of doubting is enough. Thinking about it. 
and hopefully I've got enough angle and flat. The danger is if I haven't, these have been sitting in the garage for about two years. So um, if, I, if I haven't got enough, I'll have to order some more and there won't be a 100% chance that they'll be the same. But I'm kind of hoping if I'm given the illusion that it's a chimney stack, it might also look in place rather than out of place, even if they're a bit uh, out. The ideal scenario would be taking it all out, working out if we've got enough, then ordering more and then mixing the new batch in with the, new ba uh, the old batch if there was different and then it wouldn't look so bad. But I'm just going to go for it and see where I end up. Um, other bits and pieces, uh, so one of the new tools I've got is a, uh, a new trowel. Uh, I've gone for a 6mm on this because the brick sticks are pretty small. You'll see when I get to do the floor, those tiles are mammoth. So you generally want a bigger notch size. Um, there's some really good tips on tool selection. Um, the tiling coach, uh, I'll put a link in, in below if he's been really good on the tile tips and pieces for that. Uh, also I've got myself another new tool, not really needy but I couldn't really help myself. I could have choose my... Um, my plastering trowel, but I've got a notch trowel as well, that'll get in the bucket. I've got a bucket I need to bring up downstairs. Uh, I've also then got a new blade for the um, for the saw. Now this is one of the things I was waiting on. I did have an old blade, I could have just got started with the old blade. However, what I've found before with, the, with these brick slips is that they're, they're quite brittle, quite brittle. And I think I should be generally okay when I'm doing cut straight down. But when I come to either the top or the bottom and I'm slicing this in half, it will definitely break, uh, if not breaking by doing normal cuts. So I decided to wait and get a new tile saw, specifically for it, so I'm not going to mess around and have broken brick slips, which I already don't have enough of, probably. Um, I have also got um, some spacers. So I did have these spacers before. <clears throat> Tiny little ones. These are fine. These are 10mm ones, which are absolutely fine for the brick slip job I did downstairs, which was around the fireplace around. Couldn't find these again, and they only had about... 20, 30 of them, which is probably not enough for this job. So instead, I bought some more, again, from wherever, but um, yeah, 10 mil spacers, and they'll be fine for the job as well. I uh, have also got a timber. So if, you, if you've ever done a tiling job before, what you would generally do is create yourself a level line at the bottom, build off that level line, and then you would just add in the bottom tiles at the end, and because you might have to do some sort of different cuts. So rather than be uneven, have the uneven at the top, you basically create your even level and go from there. There could be some uneven ceiling as well, which is probably likely in this house. I'm unsure if I'm going to do that yet, but I've got some tin bags just in case I'm going to create that level. And then I've also got some spaces if I am going to change the level a little bit, fix it in place, and I'll build up. I'll make that decision at another point. I'm not sure yet. I'll come back to that. Uh, other one tool-wise, of course, I've got a drill and a paddle so I can mix my adhesive. And then I also have a pencil and a, um, a tape measure so I can plan out, and probably be a decent amount of planning, but I'll come to that in a second. Uh, with an addition to that, I have uh, some music, because, you know, again, this is definitely going to be a music job. I reckon I'm going to be here for a little while doing this job, taking my time, of course, as well. Um, I've got a, a tall measuring stick, just generally making sure I'm straight and plumb for the whole job, because it's easy for those things to slip, so hopefully this will keep it nice and straight. And also for the initial leveling of the floor. And then I've just got a small one as well, um, just so I can almost check each layer as I'm going through as well, or each brick even, just to make sure I'm staying straight. Uh, lastly, in this space, uh, I've got some beer. Of course, uh, Life in Death by Vocation. One of my favourite breweries, anyway, by Vocation. Life in Death is one of the easy, accessible ones from the shop. Any of the custom ones, um, yeah, you've got to go straight there. And they've got some real beauties as well. Right, so what I'm going to do then, the plan, first thing I'm going to do is get my tape measure. I'm going to measure the brick slips in here, not that one because that was a sample. Work out how big that is. I know already I've got my 10mm spacing, so I know I can add the brick slip plus the 10mm. I'm going to measure the whole ceiling height from the wood floor here to the ceiling, and then basically defy, divide that, work out where I fall. In an ideal world, what I'm actually aiming for, because I'm essentially going to be having the floor is going to be hidden, uh, the bottom of it, by at least 10 mil because I've got a raised floor area here which I'll come into in a future video. The flooring over here is going to be raised because I'm going to have a small amount of raising for the uh, underfloor heating. Uh, oh sorry the waterproof board first which is 6 to 8 mil I think. The underfloor heating and then the tile on top. So I know I've got some space really. I don't need to be snug to the floor or don't need to worry too much how it finishes the floor because it's going to be hidden. And likewise on the ceiling what I'm really going for is probably not a brick here and then the grout in between. I know you can't see that in the camera shot there, I was at the top. 
Um, because I think that would look a bit too false, even though there is a chimney stack under there. Instead, I think it would look a bit more authentic if I've sort of spliced a brick. So if I had this halfway, two thirds, whatever is needed, essentially nip off a portion of this tile, then when I'm doing a touch up job on the plaster and I can plaster to it, and it would generally, I think at least, will look a bit more authentic, i.e. it will look like that chimney is supposed to be there with those brick slips, and then somebody's just tiled up to it, um, which is the job I did downstairs. So when I had the brick slips around the, um, the chimney stack or the chimney breast, I actually end up plastering to it so it looked like there was always there. So that's the plan for here. And that's why I wanted to get a new blade as well, because I think I'll have to slice it quite thin. So a bit of planning first, measure it, see where I fall. Then once I know, I'll also level the floor, depending on what I'm going to do in that space, and then start working my way up. Not sure how long it will take, because these are a little bit fiddly sometimes. But I'll just take my mix and I'll just take it as it goes, and then I'll, um, I'll show you when I'm finished. See you in a bit. Uh, just opening tar box and the person I bought it from said it was like nearly new. Honestly, I think it's actually brand spanking new. So yeah, happy days. I think it was about 25 quid. It's about 40, 50 quid brand new. So yeah, this is the uh, McAllister MTC 500. Right, um, had a bit of a break you now. So two things, some lessons learned, I guess. I mixed way too much of the adhesive up um, to work with it, so I'm wasting about a third of a bucket. So I need to go and get some more, so I'm going to do that shortly. Also as well, um, I probably didn't have enough brick slips. I've got enough corners, which are, from what I recall, they're the more, more, more expensive parts, um, so I think they're fine. Um, but then, uh, on top of that, I haven't got enough flats. So what I'm going to do is clean up, so all the great lines here, I'm going to clean that before it goes rock hard, go and have some lunch, pick up some more adhesive, Use the rest of the brick slips I've got. So I've got two full boxes of single, which, you know, it's not going to cover it, but it's going to do an okay job. I'll have to come and buy some more anyway. Um, and then any of the angles I've got left, I'll cut those, because I need two just for the top and then the rest is fine. I'll cut those, get those on, and then work out how many I need. To be honest, at the end of that, I'm probably going to say we might need like a box or two of just flat, but I'm going to crack on after lunch and I'll work it out from there. Okay, quick update. Unfortunately, I was right, and I didn't have enough brick slips. So a full face. I've got one missing on this side, and then I've measured. We need uh, around 45 on this side. The coming box of 30, so I'm probably going to buy two boxes. And the place where we got them from, which was nearly four years ago now, a long, long time ago, uh, they don't do this one anymore. They've got some similar. So I've sent a message to see what they've got, and I'll work it out from there. So the next video is I'll finish up take all the space out and then I'll be getting ready to um, put the grout in. Hello, uh, right so it's been probably a couple of weeks since I've picked up on this job again because uh, I ran out of materials. So in the last video I uh, probably didn't have enough uh, for this wall, I'm short about 45, I think it turned out to be about 46, 47 um, brick slips all together um, and I've been searching ever since. The place where I got them from originally, uh, brick slips, the project again, I think it was, they didn't have uh, the exact ones and the sample and the closest variations were too far out. So I spent about two weeks looking for the right one. And it ended up getting them off eBay, and it was somebody's surplus, just luckily, from a job that they did. So it's the closest match I could find, but from an overall match point of view, it's, it's not too bad. And I've got some other layers going on as well, so I've got some bit of mess I make with the grout, some of it maybe on purpose, and then also like a sealant layer, which I'll show in the next video. So really, I've got a chance to sort of blend them further. But I think I'm fairly lucky because they're fairly rustic looking anyway. So the odd odd brick, I think won't get a place too much. So today's job, I'm going to be grouting. That's the plan. Um, I've done a bit of prep work before, so I've cleaned up the mess I made before. Could have done a better job than that. I've uh, hoovered it all out as well, so there shouldn't be any real crummy bits or dusty bits in there. It should be as good as it's going to get for now. Tool-wise, uh, what I've got today is... I'm actually going to go for um, a mortar gun rather than try and get a bit fiddly and get all of the mortar into the joints with margin trowel and whatever else. I kind of feel I'm going to give this a try. So the idea is I mix up my grout, get it into this and basically plunge it in as if I'm using decorator's cork or silicone into the gaps and then closely followed by my pointer tool. So just a brickwork tool. And then that'll be for in the individual joints. So if I'm quick, I'll be able to squeeze it in and give it a nice smoothing over 
relatively quickly versus doing it by margin trial or whatever else. Have that margin trial just in case. I need to get down to that level. And then also a pointing trial. And the reality of it is though, you know, probably what will happen, it will come down to the index finger at some point, because it's normally the case. Uh, other things I've got uh, is the actual uh, grate itself. So this one's it's a slight, this is good metal grate. It's quite a light grey. It should suit with this brick because you've got the same bricks downstairs for the chimney stack, uh, the chimney breast. It looks looks pro fine. You'll see it soon enough. Um, also, I've got a light. I think it could be a light night. I'm going to try and get it all done in one night. So we'll see. The light anyway when it gets a bit darker. I've also then got my mixing paddle and drill to mix the grout. Which, because I've only got about 30 minutes to 60 minutes working time with this, and what's probably going to happen is in really small batches, get a few layers up, and then clean tools and go again. That's probably going to be the case, but we'll see where it goes. I've also then got a clean bucket of water down here, a bucket from a grout, and then I've got a sponge as well, just so I can keep a track and keep things tidy. Even though it's a bit of a dirty, rustic look, I think I don't want to give myself the headache of trying to have to clean grout off the bricks at the later point. Which, um, yeah, I'd rather avoid that. So, I'm gonna get going now. Uh, also, I've got music, sorry, also got music. Um, so, I'm gonna get going. I'll do another video once I've finished to show you how the finished look is and then let you know any problems I have, because no doubt, simple as the job is, these problems just pop up out of nowhere. So, yeah, I'll crack on. See you in the next video. Right, um, before I'll give a quick update before I wrap up. Um, I want to call it a mistake I made quite early on. So I was trying to treat it as if I was using a, a grout float. And instead, you can see the colour on this wall is it's a mess. It's recoverable, but that's going to be some effort cleaning now. So I was getting better. So what I did in the meantime, I was rushing to use um, this point tool, which got the nick of it in the end. Um, as a good YouTube video from Skill Builder, I'll put a link below. But basically, I was rushing on this side, so I was trying to get this done too fast. So what you should do really is let it go off a little bit, and it takes much better. So I got into routine. So by the time I got to my second, third, fourth uh, mix, I was in a bit of a flow. So you can see a lot cleaner, a lot better lines. Same on this side. One thing I will say is the, um, the mortar gun speed things up dramatically. You know, you got to spend some time to get the right mix and get the mix in. Speed things up dramatically, getting it in there. I wouldn't necessarily use this for just normal tiling, so when I do the porcelain tiles, I don't think I'll bother. It has an attachment for it, but you'll just use your great flow to be much more effective. Uh, the reason why I didn't use a great flow on here is just because of the contours and it'd be rough and I'll just wreck the great float. So over here, it was a case of getting the mortar in, and this was a bit more effective, I felt, than a, than a, than a pointing tool, and then afterwards just smoothed it down after giving it some time. And then after that, we just scraping a few little bits off and then brushing off. Uh, but the skill builder video, which I'll point towards, I'll sort it all out. So next steps for me is first clean this, which is unfortunate. Um, once I've done that, I'll have a quick check, make sure there's no gaps, especially in the wet area. And after I've done that, then I'm going to seal the whole uh, stack, which I'll talk you through what I'm going to do or why I'm going to do uh, in the next video. There's a few different options, but I'll, I'll talk you through. Right, so that's me for tonight. I'm going to clean up and then get to bed. See you later. Okay, so we're now all cleaned down. Um, I could have gone down the route of going for an acid wash to clean the bricks fully, but because I've got so many different bricks in here as well, especially on this face over here, I figured if I clean them properly, properly, I'll expose the difference. Even though there's gonna be a cabinet going there, they're quite well hidden. So I decided to leave it at this point, sort of general overall blend look the same. And then the last thing we're doing now is adding a, uh, a sealant basically. So originally, I was looking for a uh, sort of plastic based um, sealant to repel water altogether. But actually, in a bit of investigation on YouTube, um, I think Skill Builder was the, the video I watched, I'll put a link below. It was a recommendation when storm dry. Ultimately, it's a masonry protector for the outside bricks. And why I went for this product versus anything else is because instead of it just outright creating a, a layer, a barrier for anything to travel backwards or forwards through. This claims to create a waterproof membrane to stop water getting in, but then also lets the brick breathe. So I'm kind of thinking long term, 
it's going to be mist or sort of condensation. So most likely we'll get trapped behind there at some point, and I don't want it to get stuck. So the idea being, if anything does get in there, there should be a chance for it to come out. So it's um, it's not cheap, storm dry. Uh, I've gone for the smallest tin because I think I should have enough for the square footage. However, I only really, really bothered about this one for the most part because that's going to be getting direct water, um, or sort of indirect from the um, from the shower. This side and this side less so, around there, nothing at all really. But you'll know if I've got this on, I've got my multiple layers of protection, albeit from the uh, hydro band in the bottom, then I've got my, my DC van, I've got my grout, and I've got this on top. So it should be pretty solid. It should last its lifetime then, rather than any worries of any leaks or things. So I'm gonna apply this on. I'll show you a quick video on this if I want to apply it on, because it goes through different stages, and I'll catch you up in a minute. Okay, super quick job. All three sides, probably 10 minutes, uh, maybe if that. And it comes out like a white cream, really easy to brush on. If you've got a masonry brush, even better, just a bit wider. You can use a roller as well. I was going to use a roller, but to be honest, masonry brush was just fine. It goes in quite light creamy, and then you can see on this side and this face at the moment, it's a bit glossy. And on this side, it's already pretty much absorbed into the brick. Uh, all these three sides here, I've got about a quarter can left. You are only supposed to you need uh, just one layer. And it's sort of guaranteeing 25 years of protection. Um, however, probably what I'll do is um, finish off this quarter can once I've finished all the bits and pieces around here. I'm even tempted to see about using this on the grout as well within the shower on the basis that the grout itself would absorb water over time. But I wonder if this will stop it. So yeah, that's it pretty much done now. I'm going to leave it here. I'll show you uh, briefly tomorrow. It should cure after 24 hours. So we'll see what the finished look is going to be and I'll do a quick summary wrap up of the different stages, the various YouTube videos that I've watched to learn the extra little bit here and there and then a, a summary of the next steps. Finally, this mini project is complete. So if you saw from the last video, I was just finishing off a seal in the whole surface. And I'm happy with the colour where it's ended up because ultimately it's still looking a bit rustic, a bit dirty, so to speak. So the colours I've got around here are different bricks, uh, sort of less noticeable. Again, I was less bothered about on this side because there's going to be a unit that goes there in the first place, so that'll be hidden. For the rest of it, I'm dead happy with the overall look. You wouldn't think that this chimney stack here took several hours. I don't know how many hours, to be honest, for the different layers, which I'll talk for in a second. Um, considering it's basically still just a chimney stack but really now what it is for us is a chimney stack that is looking a bit neater than it was before if we go back to the beginning of the video at least but also it's fully waterproof so I'm not going to have any bothers certainly in the shower space uh, of this moving forwards however I do want to call it a mistake um, I don't want to say a mistake let's call it a design oversight so on this side and I'll show a video of this in the, in the next video on this side, because the shower tray is going to be meeting this wall, I had an opportunity, which I missed at the time, to ultimately have the shower tray meet the underwall and then use tanking behind it, then preventing any water, even if it got through the brick somehow with the membrane on top, to reach the bottom of it and then fall back into the tray. Instead, now I've got the bricks all the way down, so it's going to be a hassle. I am going to break some of these brick slips, but I think once I build out the floor in this side of the room, which I'll be doing in a later video, I'm going to be taking away whichever is the necessary brick slip on this side to ultimately take the shower tray former to the wall and then fully tank a membrane behind it and then put some brick slips back on top. If I can retrieve these ones, great. If not, I'll find some other closely matched ones. But then ultimately, if I do that at this stage, it turns this shower into a five-year shower into probably a 15-year shower because it will all be fully waterproof, including all the other work I'll be doing over here, which you'll see in a later video. So that's a, a mistake to highlight or an oversight to highlight if you ever go down this path again. I guess in reality, if it would have just been a tiling scenario, you would have naturally progressed to then tile on top. But because I targeted this job first, it sort of tripped me up a little bit. But one, one, one I'll pick up and I'll address it at another point. As we are looking for I'm pretty happy, as I said. So just a quick recap of the stages. So we had a pretty dirty, rustic, so rustic, just a really messy brick um, uh, fireplace stack. I trimmed all the mess off to give myself a decent enough surface and then I went ahead and then uh, plastered the surface. So the particular plaster that I used was a, a gypsum hard wall. It's designed for brickwork, masonry versus I was tempted to use bonding at first because I had some bonding left over. 
that's not really advice. And for that particular advice, tips, tricks, or whatever else, I went on Plasterers for Beginners, and he had a specific video on around uh, using hard wall. Also, another useful tip is because I beaded the side of it as well. There's another basic trick on how to attach beading to the corner of a wall. Instead of drilling and putting screws in, you can just use a bit of bonding. So they're both from Plasterers for Beginners, pretty much my favorite plaster to follow on YouTube. I'll add in both of those videos below for any plastering bits and pieces on this particular stage. Then after that, I use a, a waterproof tanking membrane. Uh, I had choices at the time, um, if you recall back, I could have either used a waterproof board, a uh, tile backing board, weddy board, Schluder, there's a, there's a bunch of them. Um, I have had them received now, I've got some six more boards, but I decided to go down the route of um, plastering instead and using the tanking membrane, which is, this is what I used. This is a uh, Hydroban, Lacrete is the, the vendor, Hydroban's a product. There's a bunch of these out there, just so happened to have these with my, my big tile order. So, essentially that paints on like paint, you will see in the stage, it goes hard, it's sort of dry, and it just creates a waterproof tanky membrane. So at this point, a nice flat surface, nicely waterproof all the way around, even further beyond the brick as well, which we'll come around into a later video. After that point, it was then onto the tiling stage. So I was going to be using brick slips, that was the plan. So I needed to muster up enough brick slips, I knew I was going to run out, knew I was going to run out unfortunately. I overused them in the, the, the job downstairs. But then it became a tiling job, basically. That's that's all it really was, albeit they're not normal tiles, probably a lot more brittle as well, to be honest. So measured up, saw how I wanted to make it fall, smacked those tiles on, pretty straightforward, really. Corner brick slips and straight ones as well, to ultimately try and get to the point of having some sort of looks like it should be there kind of scenario. That went on fine. Uh, I went for a, a sort of grey, I think gold metal was the colour, um, grey out in the middle, um, water resistant but not waterproof, hence why it's important to have a membrane underneath, especially for the, the wet area in the shower space. Uh, and then when I finished doing that, I also then finished it off with applying um, a storm dry protection. Um, so the storm dry protection, I could have used a, um, like an acrylic or a plastic based product, which fully sealed. But in watching a couple of videos, um, Skill Builder, which I'll put a link in below as well, there was a, just a random video I stumbled upon about waterproofing the outside of a house. That's what this product is for, really. And I kind of like the look of it because although it provides a waterproof membrane on the outside, it's also supposed to be breathable. So should water get into the brick, which is bound to, right? We're in a shower, it's going to get steamy. Even though there's an extraction, it's going to get steamy. Water will get in there at some point. We need to be able to let it out at some point. So ideally, this is what this brick can approve, uh, this, uh, this product can approve, is helping water get back out from these beams. So, that went on, you saw when it was going on, it was quite shiny, but it was quite musty to begin with, a bit faint, then it was quite a shiny, wet finish, and then it's absorbed straight into the brick, and you, know, you never know that it was on in the first place. Suggest so here, 25 years worth of cover, I think it's what it said, 25 year guarantee, and I've used probably, this is a really small tin, but I've used probably two thirds of this tin, but I've got enough left over that when I do my little demolish piece of work down here, I'll put some on there, and then to be honest, I'm probably gonna empty this tin on the wall, but potentially, I'm thinking about it, on the grey lines I'll be doing within the shower, and maybe the wall within the shower, just to give it an extra bit of protection for it. So that's it on this job, and it'll take much, much, much longer than I was expecting, um, considering literally it's just brick in a, a chimney stack. But I'm happy with the overall finish, and it's pretty much where I wanted it to. I don't think I want to clean the bricks anymore, that's about right for what we're looking for, because it's going to be quite a busy bathroom with other tiles and things we've got going on, which you'll see in a later video. So I'm happy with the overall look and I think we can draw the line under it for now.